Hello. Hi, hello. I'm a few minutes early today. So we'll see if um, anybody comes along. I've got my finished city tote. Sitting proudly there. Let's move my ironing board slightly. Now I can't work out if my cutting table has moved since last night or not because my husband's been fiddling with the um, sound levels today. So hopefully you can hear me okay today. Um, I've been doing a few experiments and hopefully we've worked out what happened. So just if you're here. Hi, I can see you. Hi, TT. I did finish it. Yeah, I'm really pleased with it. Do you like it? I think it looks great, don't you? And I think the red actually looks perfect with it. It really brings out the, um, the print on the fabric. And I've got the feet. And on the other side, I had um, a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the red. And I've got the handles. But you can see now why um, I didn't want to put a snap in. Because when it's finished, it's got quite a, a boxy shape to it got more of a, a sort of a square shape to it and I did actually go back and add the magnetic snap to this one because I thought well if I'm going to have it as a sample um, or take some photos of it people will want to know why there's no fastening but um, as you can see it doesn't sit how you expect it to so when you've got the um, exterior panels together you think it's going to be more of a um, back kind of shape <laughs> But once you put the lining in with that uh, zip divider, it pulls it in and makes it more of a boxy shape. So, hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, what if you're watching. Hi, everybody. Give me a shout if you're here. I am a little bit early. In fact, it's not even 7 o'clock yet. We're only just coming to 7 o'clock. Yeah, early for once. So today we're going to be finishing the exterior and adding the lining in and just getting it all finished. So we'll be on page 114 of the Complete Bag Making Masterclass. And this is the city tote that we're doing from it. Hi, hi Lizzie. Oh look, I can wave to you in, in the app. I didn't know I could do that, that's clever. So hello, hi everybody coming, hi everybody. The pattern table has moved slightly, has it? There we go. Okay. Hi. Oh, it's nice to see you. Lovely to see you. So, hi. Hi, Belle. Hi, Nova. Hi, Titi. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Sienna. Hi, Carol. Hi, Laurie. Thank you very much. So, um, yeah, I'm glad I finished this version so you could see before we got some in the um, exterior in. You can see it is so it's quite big and quite wide um, and you've got the zip divider there and that's what gives it the shape that's what pulls it into shape and if you've got loads of files and folders and things you can just pop them in it's perfect shape bag perfect size bag for carrying files folders books all sorts of things like that hi Elaine hi oh good well good morning to you in Canada is it morning? Is it morning where you are? Um, now, usually in my studio, I've got three clocks and I have one on my time and I have one on Cincinnati time because I've got a friend in Cincinnati and one on um, Alberta time because that's where Janelle, my best friend, is. And I haven't put them up yet. I haven't found them at home. So um, I have no idea what time it is anyway. Apart from here, we're at seven o'clock. 7.01. I was early. So, um, so, yeah, so that gives you a good idea of the shape of this bag. So when you're making it, it seems like it's going to be um, flatter and more sort of angled at the side. But once you put that zip divider in, and if you left the zip divider out, it would give you that um, sort of more angled look on the bag. But once you put the zip divider in, it just pulls it in there. And inside, I've used my exterior fabric for the zip divider. Kits, if you can see those in there. It's quite a busy lining, but I think it needed bright, this one. And I did go ahead and add the magnetic snap. 
So I will go back and add that to the lining now before we um, go too much further. So I'm wondering where I can put that, where I can apply it. Pop it there. Give us a bit of motivation. Keep going. Okay. So before we do anything else, I'm going to add the magnetic snap to my lining because I've sort of gone back on that renegade on my decision. Um, and I'm sure you all know how to add a magnetic snap, but I'm being very lazy and I'm going to add it through both layers at once. So I'm going to cut my holes through both layers in one go. So just see how everybody is. Um, so the this one is Ankara Wax Fabric from Patcha Mix Crafts, from my friend TT, and she sent me that fabric um, as a gift. And then the red on the end is cork, and the lining is quilting cotton. And I used So Fuse from Castine Handcrafted, which um, I fused to all pieces, including the cork, actually, because I wanted a little bit extra stability on that one, and it's got foam in it. So the um, Ankara, the navy fabric, this Ankara was gifted to me. Everything else I paid for. And unfortunately the hardware I paid for. I keep telling Janelle that because I'm her best friend that I should get hardware for free, but she doesn't, she doesn't believe me. So let's see. Um, oh, you know where I can put the bag. <laughs> Hi everybody. Hi, thank you for logging in. I've got comments. I've got some comments on my phone, but I haven't got all the comments. I think because it's slightly delayed. So um, if I miss your comment, please do give me a shout and I'll come back and answer. So I need a little tiny pair of scissors and a slicey thing. I don't know what it's called, a craft knife. It's probably the technical term. Pencil, fray check. Anything else? Oh, now I've run out of duct tape. Now I ran out of duct tape last year and I forgot to replace it. I still haven't got around to replacing it. And I'll get a scrap of foam out of my um, scrap bin. It's a couple of one inch squares for my magnetic snap. You don't have to be too accurate about this. If you haven't got any foam, you could use something like a scrap of leather or Decaville or S520, which is a very firm interfacing. Just something that's gonna stop that, um, stop that gap opening. Hi everybody, hi. Thank you for joining us, nearly finished to make your sister tote. I've seen some nice fabric combinations popping up in the group which is good. Two washers. So these come in packs of two and I always use the first one out of a pack and then I put the second one somewhere safe usually in this drawer here and then I forget about it and lose it and start another pack. So I'm going to put this in here and one day I'll go through that drawer and find zillions and zillions of magnetic snaps and wonder why I was constantly buying more. Um, right, so I'm just using the washer to mark placements on my foam and in the foam I'm folding it in half and just do a little a couple of little snips and the same with this one. Now I need the placement measurements from the book so we are on so we're on page 114 for the exterior for the placement of the magnetic snap it's on page 112 and I'm not giving you all the measurements they're all in the book um, just have to be careful of our um, copyright agreement with the publishers so I can't give you everything on the video but um, it's all there in the book for you uh, right well hang on did it say from the top or to the middle doesn't say so I'm guessing that that's the top edge of the snap so just put your washer in place if I don't say then I probably mean the top edge rather than the middle 
Now, I've only marked on one. Oh, look, I've done it in the wrong place as well. I've done it off centre. <laughs> okay, pretend, pretend we didn't notice that. <laughs> Move it over a bit. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I'm just, just proving we're not perfect, eh? Now I've got to remember to not cut through the wrong ones. Good thing about pencil is nobody can see it. Right, um, okay, so I've drawn my marks. Now I'm going to get my little craft knife and I'm just going to cut along these slits through both layers of the lining because I've lined them up. One is perfectly aligned under the other. Let's have a fray check. Hope you've all had a good day. Bank holiday here on Monday, so it's a three-day weekend. I believe it's probably a three-day weekend most places um, this weekend. Let me know if it is or isn't where you live. Right, so I'm going to pop the um, female half. So that's the half with the inner on the panel with the pockets there's there's really no right or wrong way to place these just personal preference and if anybody tells you there's a right and a wrong way you can say mm, no there isn't unless janelle tells you and she is the hardware queen so if she told me then i would believe her all right now i now bend my prongs inwards and i used to always say it didn't matter whether you bend them inwards or outwards but I have since discovered and them outwards, then over time, those prongs can work their way loose and come out. But if you bend them inwards, they're pulling on themselves, so they can't work themselves loose. Um, so in that situation, I have changed my way of thinking. And I do them in on themselves, so that's nice and secure. Now put the other half in and I'm just poking it through the holes or the slits that I've made. I've added some fray checks so hopefully this hole shouldn't expand any further. And if I turn it this way you might be able to see where I made the mark in the wrong place to start with. Oh, won't mention that. Can't really edit in a live can we so I can't even edit it out. <laughs> just have to rely on your so just pretend. So I've added my foam and my washer, and now I'm bending the prongs. So if it is a three-day weekend for you, have you got any plans? Going to do anything? I think we're going to get on with decorating the living room because we've had it plastered now finally. So we're ready to go. Um, it'd be nice to have a living room back. Right, so that is the lining definitely completely done. Magnetic snap in. So now we're going to turn to page 114. I sound like I'm about to start a Bible reading, don't I? Turn in your books to page 114. Or a school teacher, I guess. Um, now, I am going to change the um, order that we're doing things in just to be wild and exciting I'm gonna do my straps first and this is a curveball because I hate sewing straps so I've done one already um, just to keep me motivated and drop the other handle there we go hope everybody's okay so, oh let me check on the comments here my mic is cutting out I'm really sorry shouldn't shouldn't be cutting out let me try changing it for a minute is that working there we go feel a little bit bare without my apron on right is that better good oh hi erica lee nice to see you dad we did the straps you get a gold star for that one <laughs> right brilliant okay we'll try without my apron Right, so I've done one, I'll do the other, and I'm going to draw a line down the centre. Now, this vinyl doesn't press very well at all, so I'm not going to press my straps at all, which um, I did say the other day, I'm a bit of a rule breaker, and that's the rule I'm going to break today. 
that's one of the rules I'm going to break today. I might break another rule. Who knows? So to do this, I'm going to mark halfway, and that is, um, I don't know, two and a half inches, I'm guessing. Did that maths in my head. What's five divided by two? Two and a half. I know you're impressed, aren't you? <laughs> I've had a day of maths because my royalties came in for the book, so I had to work out how many pennies I got from each book. <laughs> so I think five divided by two is about my limit. Right. Now, usually what we would do is press these into the centre, press these edges into the centre. Um, we're going to do the um, method which is in my book, which has got the fully enclosed straps. So, um, see which side is neater. Swap you over. And you can see on this strap that all the edges are completely enclosed in that seam there. I don't know if it'll focus on, on it there. So that's what we're going to do. So if you've seen this method in another one of my patterns, that's exactly what we're doing. So um, because I can't press my faux leather, I'm going to fold that in and I'm just going to clip it into place for the minute. And about there-ish. Now, I measured on the other one that halfway of that halfway is about there on my machine, which is about five, eight, five eighths of an inch. I've oiled my machine this morning before for any other HD9 owners asked me why I haven't oiled my machine. I did it this morning. So I'm going to sew on that five eighths of an inch um, line directly down the centre, and that's going to hold this in place. So on my finished strap here, I've got a line of stitching down the centre and it looks like it's decorative. It looks like I've done three lines of stitching, but really it's just to hold it in place. If your faux leather or your cotton doesn't need, uh, doesn't mind a bit of ironing, then, you know, then do that. Or you can do this um, if you prefer. So I'm not going to bother back stitching because we're going to seal this end anyway. And I'm just going to sew down the entire length and um, the bit that I haven't clipped, I'm just going to fold over as I go. folding as I sew along here. And if I had another strap, I would start that um, other strap now on the end so I didn't have to trim it off but I've done one already. So now I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. So I'm just going to clip at the top and a few inches down. Just check if there's any other comments or any issues. Um, oh thank you very much Sherry. Good I'm glad you can hear me better. Fab. Okay. Um, if I'd known I had to take my apron off I would have put one of my like, t-shirts with a sewing slogan on or something. <laughs> doing exactly the same on this side. Oh, I've lined it up on the wrong line as well. Oh dear. Okay. This will be have to be our secret. She'll forever know that my stitching doesn't match. Tell Lewis and Irene. Okay. 
Now, if I was doing it for myself, I would cut another strap uh, because this faux leather, even with a bit of heat, it doesn't do very well with unpicking. So um, we should just have to live with it. And we shall learn that every bag has got an error or a mistake. And this is maybe this one's. There could be more. Right, so now we've sewn our edges in to the centre. We're going to fold it back on itself. And this is how we do a fully enclosed strap. Now, if your machine can't handle thickness or bulk, don't do it this way. Do it the traditional way, um, which is where you do it, you know, four folds and then you turn the end under. So once we've folded those um, that back on itself, let me do that again so you can see. So we've folded the edges into the centre and then back on itself, matching up the folds. So on this side, we've got the folds matching. I'll just turn that around so you can see. Change angle. Okay. And we're going to sew along this edge here. And I like to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance on the end because you're only going to chop it off. No point in losing length. As you can see, I did do some back stitch in there as well. Right, so once we've sewn that, I get my scissors. I'll try and do this in view of the camera. Just going to clip off the corners there on the end. Don't go too close to your stitching. And if you've got a bit of a bulk on the end there, just trim that off as well. So you could really do a one eighth of an inch seam allowance on that one. You've just trimmed all of the bulk. Now you can turn that through. And I like to say this is, uh, this turns it into a, like a little boat. There. And I'll get my trusty crochet hook, which has still seen no crocheting at all. And poke the end out. Sorry if you can hear some thumps and jumps. I think somebody gave Elvis some sugar today. It might have been me. And just poke that out so that it goes as square as you can get it. I think I've got a little bit too much bulk in there for that to go square. Let me just trim a little bit more off. This is obviously a lot easier with quilting cotton. So if your machine doesn't particularly like thickness or bulk, then use a quilting cotton. Right, so once we've got that square, I just like to finger roll it to even up the seam. And then that keeps all of our seam allowances hidden. So I'm going to do the other end. And then what we'll do is we'll sew around all four edges like we do on a traditional seam. The only difference is this one's got the... Um, middle line of stitching or nearly middle on that side <laughs> and the enclosed seams there so I'll fold that one back on itself and stitch across the end I didn't say this actually, but what I like to do is when I'm putting that underneath, I like to really lift my foot as high as it can go so that it doesn't pull that end out of place or out of shape when you're putting it under. Let's see how everybody is. Um, oh, thanks Lizzie, got the, um, got the links there. Oh dear, Lewis and Irene, sorry. Your sample will forever have a slightly wonky line of stitching on your strap. It's just a good reminder that nobody's perfect. <laughs> right, so let me swap back so you can see the whole strap here. Now we're going to fold it. So can you see I've got um, one end, or both ends, sorry, sort of folded in there. Now we're going to enclose all of those raw edges by folding it back along that center line and I'll pin this one. This faux leather doesn't seem to mind being clipped as long as it's not warm. If it's warm then it leaves marks um, and it also melts. The other handle 
nearly got a bit singed earlier, so that's how I know not to press this faux leather. Clip along the entire length of that handle. And then we can sew. Get rid of some of these triangles. So as we sew, I'm going to sew along the open edge first. Then I'm going to sew all the way down pivot with my needle down and my foot up and sew along the bottom and then stop my needle down foot up pivot and go back up and do that all the way around all four edges using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance on my regular stitch length which is number three on this machine back to the beginning right I probably should have said at the start that my machine is an HD9 by Janome and Janome gifted it to me for promotional purposes um, and it can it can handle thicknesses like this really really easily hasn't even twisted that strap right uh, so now again we're gonna ignore the book and I'm gonna keep going with their handles for the minute just so they're fully done and um, I'm going to be using my rivet press so I'm going to add the handles to the hardware before we attach the hardware to the bag so this is a slight deviation from the book uh, what do I need a pencil or oh, a green pen there we go green pen and I've got an acrylic template for rivets and I would love to tell you who this was from this one was from by Piera but she stopped doing templates now um, although we do have a couple of sponsors who do templates so if you want um, rivets templates we can um, advise you on where to get those hole punch and some fray check even though it's not really fray fabric it's good to have okay two straps they're both the same length more or less uh, right so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna punch or I'm gonna mark and punch two holes nearish to the end so you're not so close and I'm using the um, so this strap is one and a quarter inches so I'm gonna use the one inch strap template and just line it up as best I can in the center and I draw through my template with my pen. Although obviously you can measure and mark them as best you can. And then I'm going to punch my holes. Let me check I've got the right size. Yeah, two and a half mil. I was punching feet holes earlier and changed it up to four and a half. So 
best to double check. Okay, there we go. So I've done two holes there. Now I'm going to thread that through my hardware. Now I need to think which way I want it to go. So I want it to go, no, hang on, front to back. I'm going to thread it through and fold it over approximately about an inch ish if your fabric or your faux leather is quite thick like mine just fold it through as much as you need to to get a nice finish and then i can mark through the holes that we've already got where to punch the holes for the other side Take the ring off of there and punch these holes and this um hole punch is just a handheld hole punch this one's by silverline got it from from wilco but you can get um one from your hardware store you sell them online for straps like this um i just use a handheld one so now using that one end as a template i'm gonna use that to mark the positioning on my other strap so again using the holes just to draw a dot through for where we're going to mark now that I'm actually making this I think I need to swap to large rivets rather than medium because it's quite thick I can punch those And then we'll do the other two ends as well. So they're all matching exactly the same. And you know they're all lined up nicely. Let's check if there's any comments or any queries. Oh great, you've got the acrylic template links. Thank you very much. Oh brilliant, okay. Um, so top stitch, top stitch, length stitch. Well, my um, number three stitch does come out beautifully anyway, so um, I, I didn't need to change it. And also, if I change it, then um, I have to remember to change it back, and that's the biggest issue for me. Uh, oh, yeah, Karen, we're sad too. Um, bag making is my therapy. Bag maker, yes, that's true. Great, okay, so you've got some links in there for the um, rivet templates, great. Right, so I'll turn this round and do the um, holes on the other end. So you should have four holes on each end of each strap. Now, if you're not confident that you can get two lined up perfectly, just add one. And I think just having one is always better than two wonky ones. And I say that as the voice of experience from somebody who's got many a bag with two wonky ones on it. In fact, even now, this bag may yet end up with two wonky ones on it. But we're hopeful. Hopeful it will be all lovely and straight. So with this one, you do need a bit of hand strength. If you haven't got that strength in your hands, then choose um, a rivet press that you hammer. So just use a hole punch, a rivet hole punch, sorry, not a rivet press. Use a hole punch that you can hammer on a solid surface. And I will be punching holes later for my bag base. So I'll show you that when we get to it. Right, so this is the last set of holes, and then I'll add a dab of fray check just to make sure none of the backing frays or expands or anything, and then we can get our rivets in. Not much actual sewing in um, this section. Mostly just playing with tools. Right, so we're done with that for the minute. Oh, little stack of holes dropped in my drawer there. Pop these all in my scrap spin. And we 
we put a dab of fray check on all of those holes. I'm just using the prim fray check, but you can use any one that you like. I like to use the clear one. I did have the one that's white and then apparently turns clear as it dries. And I got it everywhere, genuinely everywhere. And I made a right mess. So I've swapped back to this clear one. Even though the other one was cheaper and did seem to work a little bit better. Right, so I'm going to have a rummage in my drawers for large rivets. So you talk amongst yourselves for a minute and I'll get my rivets. Um, now I haven't checked that I've got large, but I've got lots of everything else. So we'll assume I've got large. It's likely I've got large, isn't it? Because if you're in doubt, stick a rivet in it. Uh, right, small rivets, large rivets. There we go. And we're doing silver nickel on this one. Thank you very much for helping me choose which hardware finish to go for. So these are 9mm cap by 12mm posts. And that's just because my fabric is quite thick there. And I'm using my rivet press. I do have a separate video on rivets on my YouTube channel. Just search Sewing Patterns by Mrs H on YouTube and that will come up. So if you want to know a little bit more about rivets and riveting and presses and things, it's on there for you. Just check. Uh, oh, snacks, chocolate. Yeah, great. Good option. Right, so now I'll need four rivets per handle. So one, two, three, four. As you can tell, maths is my strong suit today. Right, need some more posts. One, two, three. Oh, there we go. Pop those back in. Put my small or my medium rivets with it so that I don't forget to put those back in my drawers. Otherwise, when I come to need them again, I won't be able to find them. Sorry for the wrestling. I have to keep everything organised in my drawers because I've got so much hardware. Or, uh, I've got just the right amount of hardware, obviously. So now I'm going to use my um, diamond strap anchors, which is the um, hardware you need for this. And I'll thread my strap through and just manoeuvre it into place so those holes align. Now you want the, um, sort of the end of the strap to be on the back when the diamond is attached. So you can attach these however you like. I've got it with the point facing down. And I'm going to push the posts through and double check that that will definitely fit. Yes, phew, I haven't got any extra large ones. So that's lucky. Pop the cap on. And then the second one. And I'm going to set these using my rivet press, which I think is why it's easier to do these when they're not attached to the bag, because otherwise you're um, trying to fit the whole bag under this press. And um, my rivet press has got a very tiny throat space. Okay. Turn it around because I'm right-handed. Now there is more information on how to choose your rivets and your rivet press how to use it, in which situation you'd use it, um, on my video. So do go on there and have a look. And then making sure that your strap is the, um, you know, is the right way round. Add my second strap anchor and do exactly the same. I did manage to attach a strap once on a carpet bag, companion carpet bag. And on one end, it had the strap, like it had the strap, let me swap. So on one end it had the strap like that, 
and on the other end it had the strap like that so it was kind of twisted on application and you know nobody has ever ever noticed and we take it to every show we go to every trade fair every show nobody's ever noticed unless i point it out to them in which case most people don't really even care either so um if you do accidentally manage to get it twisted it's not the end of the world <laughs> just use it as your reminder that on every bag there's always a mistake could be worse could be as bad as mine or it could be as bad as mine while you're doing a live with other very good and very talented bag makers watching right okay so that's one handle that's going to be attached oh hang on have i done this right yes i have phew okay one handle done that can be placed to one side for the minute can't believe i've actually got my um handles done before i had to it's a miracle i wouldn't say i'm a reformed character because it won't be the same on the on the next one and in fact on that um ankara wax print fabric i left the handles till very last again of course i did <laughs> right so we'll add these rivets just adjust my microphone again i can see it flooping down there i've got a bit of lace on this top on this jumper and i thought um it might give me somewhere to attach my microphone to. <laughs> and it's not quite as risky as it, it looks on the camera. I am wearing a top underneath. <laughs> looks a bit risky. Always what you want on a live, eh? Right, so that's one hat done. I'll do the other. Oh, that's one side of that one done. Make sure it's threaded through properly. I just take a minute to just you know, just look at it and double check before you set your rivets. Should be able to work out which way it's meant to go just by looking. If it doesn't look right, try it a different way. Let's set these. You can hear on um, on good quality rivets. You can hear when they um, they sort of clip together before you set them you can hear that little snap okay right lovely two handles done and i'm ahead of the game excellent well done me top of the class right how are we doing all doing okay Yep, you could use a single rivet, that would be fine. Uh, for the squiffy sling, yeah, absolutely. That would be fine. Most times a single rivet is quite strong, actually, so um, you should be okay. Right, let's do the exterior then. So in this little pouch, I've got the rest of my hardware, I've got the rest of my, I've got my bag feet as well. So where we left off on the cutting and interfacing, for the exterior i just attached my foam um but i hadn't trimmed it all so now i've gone through and trimmed all of the my seam allowance and on the side panels i've added my um marks at the top and bottom in the seam allowance at the center and i've also marks from the pattern where to stop and start the side seams so i've done that on both of those and then on my main panels i've transferred the markings for the strap anchors let me see if you can see that a little bit better on the other view so i've transferred my markings for the strap anchors here and i've cut through the slits and added a dab of fray check to each four of those slits so that's where my strap anchor is going in and i've also punched the holes for the feet on the bottom there so on the pattern piece, it does show you where to position those. Let's get the pattern piece for you to see. Swap you back so you can see what I'm doing. So 
there's the pattern piece and it's got the markings at the top for the strap anchors and then for the feet it's got them um, one in the centre and one to the side there. Uh, now this pattern also calls for some bag base. There is possibly a slight error in the bag base um, punching the hole so I'll show you how to double check for that. It could just be my dodgy seam allowances but we'll double check. Right so what we're going to do now is we're going to do exactly the same as we did for the lining with the exterior. We're going to attach the side panels into the um, main panels. So pop one of those to the side. Now these side panels are, um, do you remember on the lining it was in two pieces, these are in one piece so that we don't need to get worry about which side to attach. So line up the edge with the edge and you'll see on the top of the side panel there's a little angle there and that's what you line up with the top edge of the main panel. And I'll clip that into place just to hold it until I get to sew it. And then I'll clip down and where we've put that mark that's to indicate where we start and stop sewing on the side seam. So don't be tempted to sew further than that. If you need to stop, if you can't stop directly on it, it's better to stop slightly before than afterwards. So we've attached, uh, we've clipped that one. So we'll sew this one before we do any more clipping. Put some of these tools away. My handy dandy drawer. This is just a kitchen island, this is. This is not anything fancy. Um, and we're using the regular seam allowance of three eighths of an inch, which is one centimetre. And I'm just sewing all the way down to that side seam marking and then um, now usually I would press this and then press it open but this faux leather as you know doesn't really like being pressed so I'm just going to finger press it for the minute and I can add a little clip at the top there to help encourage the seam allowance to go one way or another in fact I think I'd do it the seam allowance towards the main panel because that's cotton and it's going to sit a little bit neater. Right, now this one is sewn in a sort of a circle. So, oh, I've moved my clips out of the way. I need those. So I've done one main panel and one side panel. Now I'm going to attach the side panel there onto the other side of that. So just flip that over and again match the tops. And we're going to sew down to that side seam start and end mark. So I'll put a clip at the, that marking so that we know which, where to stop. Okay, so this panel is attached to that panel and we're sewing it to this new panel. And I'm going to start at the bottom for this one. We'll start at that mark that start and end seam, side seam mark that's on the pattern piece and I'm back stitching the start and the end oh my thread's nearly out see if we can make it to the end of the seam Oh, look at that, perfect. Just a tiny, tiny bit left over. So now I can open this out and encourage the seams to go towards there with my clip. And this is what you've got so far. So you've got one end panel with two main panels in between. I'd better find some more thread, hand now. Let's see. Is it in there? No, it's probably in the drawer of doom. I'll have to hunt in my box. Now this is the box of all my threads from when we moved and although I'm on the wall now, um, I haven't actually transferred my threads yet. 
So let's pretend I did a much neater job than just throwing them all in a box. I did them. I just threw them all in the box. Right, what colour is that? Five, four, five. Now, I'm sure I saw another spool of this. But, of course, where it is, who knows? Ah, oh, look at that. There we go. It's less disorganised than we might think. <laughs> that might be my weekend's project, putting all my spools back up on the thread rack did have them in rainbow order and I thought you know what I'm not gonna be able to store them in rainbow order in the move so I might as well just embrace it and chuck them all in a box and also I might have gotten to that stage of the move where it was just chuck it all in a box so, right get this loaded up quick as a flash before you know it We'll be sewing again and we just need to add that extra um, end panel on onto those ones that we've sewn before. This is my concentrating face if you haven't seen it before. This is my oh better get it threaded right. As with most machines, if you thread it wrong, this machine does not like it. It is a bit funny. Let me thread it right. There we go. So now we need our last end panel and we're going to attach that to one or other sides. It doesn't really matter. I'll attach it to this side and same principle again so line up the top and we're going to sew as far as that marking that we've transferred from our pattern there we go right so I'll sew that one from the end again and this exterior comes together very quickly which is quite nice the lining took a little bit more time if you're someone who likes a quick win I'd say sew the exterior first and then you can look at it while you're sewing the lining and be satisfied now usually what I would do is press all of these seams open but this faux leather can't handle it so I'm just going to rely on smoothing it down to be enough. Now the last thing we need to do is join these into a tunnel so I'm going to just manipulate that so it wants to sit naturally like that and just pull it round so that the tops match. Don't be afraid of stretching it or pulling it out. You just need to get it where you need to get it to sew your seam. And again, sewing as far as that marking. Using the same stitch length, same seam allowance. we've got is a tubey bag okay so that's the top and at the bottom here we're going to flatten it out I'll turn it around so you can see it from your point of view so I've got the top towards me you've got the bottom towards you we're going to match those bottom edges center to center and um, edge to edge and we're just going to clip or pin if you're using pins along the bottom there and we're going to sew this bottom edge first. And if you did the lining already, you'll know how this is going to go. It's very, very similar. So we're just going to sew along that bottom edge using our regular stitch length and our regular seam allowance of three eighths of an inch or one centimetre. need 
So just double check I have gone over my basting stitches. Yep, I have. Great, okay. Now you can take the rest of these clips out. So how we've got it at the moment, that's the top. This is the bottom. So we're attached. We're in a sort of a weird triangular shape. Now we need to attach the bottom of this side end panel in to the bottom of the bag. So in the curve. Just check if there's any other um, comments. Um, let's see. Nice handles. Thank you very much. Um, you've loved all the tutorials. Oh, great, Dalva. That's great. Lunchtime. Brilliant. Um, you've not noticed to connect to the wrong way around at the shows. <laughs> yeah, you will have to look for that. Uh, right, let's see. Um, oh, you're welcome. So I like to use sew all polyester rather than cotton because I think your bag is carrying something precious. If it wasn't carrying something precious, you wouldn't have a bag with you. And I, um, we've done a little, a few tests at retreat with trying to stretch and break threads. And cotton does snap when it's under pressure. Um, you know, it does snap quite easily. And I don't want to risk my precious contents or the strap failing or my bag falling because I've used cotton. So I like to use polyester. Right, okay, so I think we're caught up with um comments and things um yes only the maker knows the little errors customers probably never notice no i'm sure they don't and if you ever look at a commercial bag you see there's loads of errors everywhere on them they're shocking quality and um you know we don't don't really notice do we so i'm just gonna have a little drink so i'll turn my mic off for a minute The only problem with that is I've got to remember to turn it back on again. Okay, so now we need to close these holes. And this is, um, so our bag has got a lovely curved base to it. So it's, it's sort of a box bottom, but with a curve. So this mark on your side edge, your edge piece, I should probably look up what the name of it is. Hang on. End panel. So this <laughs> centre mark on your end panel, you're going to line that up with the centre bottom seam. So on mine, I'm going to open my seam allowances out and then mark that centre bottom seam to that mark on the end panel and clip those into place. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ease this round into place and this should fit perfectly if you followed the right seam allowances. If it doesn't, Give it a bit of a tug, manipulate it into place. Just use your fingers to smooth out any, what might be any little puckers. Just make sure that that's nicely in place. If you're not confident that you can do this, you can always use a stapler and you can always staple that into place um, in the seam allowance. And then once you've sewn it, you can trim it back. how that looks from the inside I think that looks okay so now I'm going to sew with the end panel down okay so that's the end panel sew with that down and I'm going to sew from where I stopped my seam all the way around this curve to where I stopped my seam on the other side and I'll back stitch at the start and I'm going to start in the seam allowance so I'm going to back stitch in the seam allowance then join this line of stitching and keep it going all the way around uh, right, so I'll get this under the machine and then I'll swap the view so you can see what's going on with the machine. Okay. And again, same seam allowance. And there's no need to rush on this one or hurry. Take your time. I should say, actually, sometimes these seam allowances just want to walk a little bit for it to 
fit together a bit nicer and that's okay just ignore that as long as it sits nice and flat under the needle exactly where you're sewing it doesn't matter just try and stick to the seam allowance on the panel that's facing up you're going to be trimming the rest of those seam allowances off anyway Now we've sewn that, I'm just going to check for any little puckers and I'll have a little look inside and I'll run my finger around the inside. No, no puckers at all. And that's because we've had the end panel face down. It's got back so you can see. We've had the end panel down on the bottom so that as we're sewing the top, the end panel seems to be able to move and shift as it needs to, to be able to meet the seam line on there and I don't know you know I don't know quite how it works it out but it does so so long as it looks nice and neat doesn't matter does it um so I've got my pinking shears out and we're going to trim that curve the seam allowance on that curve you if you haven't got pinking shears you could just clip into the seam or notch it but I've got pink in shears, so I'm going to clip around there. And that will just help the curve sit nice and neat when you turn it out. You're taking away the bulk of the fabric or the extra um, bulk of the fabric that you don't need in the seam allowance. But you're also helping it to sit nicely in that curve. You don't need to do all of the seam, literally just that curved bit there. Okay, so if you've got any questions on sewing that bit together... Let's have a little look and double check. Let's see. Um, a thinner foam double layer plus fabric is too thick to go under my machine. Okay, so Alison, if that can't go through your um, machine, you might want to try something like fusible fleece. Or, now I hate to say this, but you could, um, or you could float it actually. So you could cut your foam down so that your foam won't go in the seam allowances. So cut it half an inch smaller all the way around. Then cut another piece of interfacing and fuse the foam to the interfacing and then fuse the outside of the interfacing into your seam allowances. So your foam will sort of be sandwiched in between your fabric that's interfaced and another layer of fabric holding it in place. But the only layers you're actually sewing through is the um, extra layer of interfacing. So that's an option. I don't tend to enjoy sewing with fusible foam. I find that it wrinkles really badly, no matter what you do. Even if you interface and put woven on and all these different tricks, I find it wrinkles really badly. So I don't tend to use that, but um, you could swap it for fusible fleece or float your foam in between the um, interfacing. That might help reduce the um, thickness of it. If you're not using a walking foot, then try using a walking foot. That helps sometimes uh, with machines that can't handle bulk. Uh, right. Hi, Sharon. Nice to see you. Uh, lovely to see you. you use a, a leather needle on your machine and it works really well. Oh, that's good. That's fab. I tend to use a universal, but a, a thicker needle or a bigger needle is definitely, definitely going to help there. But if you find that it can't handle the thickness definitely take it out of the seam allowances okay so again I've matched my center seam up with the center of my side panel now I'm just going to ease these in around the curve and this will give you this beautiful beautiful curved um, curved boxed corner I guess just another way of doing corners slightly more interesting than just doing a boxed Corner. Right, so I've clipped my way around and I'm going to start here in the seam allowance and go all the way around that curve again. And then if you've got any questions, give me a shout. Oh, my clip was stuck under my foot then. Uh, my wonky cutting out is revealed in this 
corner, but luckily I don't think you'll be able to see it. My main panels ain't quite neat. <laughs> All of my secrets are hidden in my seam allowances, though. You never see. Right, so let's swap you back to the other view and just run my finger around inside and double check that all of those. Uh, right. I need to just take a little bit extra there where I haven't quite met the seam allowance. Or I haven't quite met the stitching on the um, on the side seam. Go a little bit further there. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Have a look inside. Yep, yeah, good. Don't want to um, use my pink and shears on my seam allowance if it's not quite right or if I've got to take any more in or unpick it or anything. So just double check before you trim. My pink and shears are absolutely useless over any kind of bulk, so I tend to leave that um, centre seam a bit untrimmed to save myself frustrations. Right, so we get rid of those, and now we need to um, measure for our bag base. So I'll take it out and the measurements for or the dimensions for the bag base are in the supplies list a couple of pages before. So at the start of the city tote. Right, so we'll push these corners out. That's when that beautiful curve is revealed on our bag. Oh, it's a beautiful curve once it's all pushed out nice and neat. <laughs> kind of a bit of a mess before you push it all out nice and neat. There we go. So that's a lovely wide round curve on this bag. That's what makes it a little bit different from some of the other ones that are out on the market. Right, so now we're going to measure, we're going to double check the measurement between our holes. So our feet holes, we've already punched those earlier. We're just going to double check the measurement in between and check that, um, that that matches. So in theory, that is two and a half inches. Yeah. Yeah, fab. Okay, so you will need to then, on your bag base, it says in the instructions, so we're on page, uh, we're on page 115, and we're skipping from step 11. So we've sewn, done step 11. Skip to number 14. And you'll need to make a note there that instead of it being one inch from the edge, it needs to be one and a quarter inch from the edge. So I'm going to write that in my book. I'm allowed to because I wrote, wrote the book. <laughs> And I'll make sure that if we haven't got that in the errata already listed on the website that we add that in. So I'll get some bag base from my drawer down here. Now what colour have we got? We've got blue. Have I got blue to match? I think I have got blue in my packet. Colour coded chopping mats. And these ones are quite handy because they've got a smooth side, which I suppose you're supposed to use for actual chopping and the other side is like a grid non-slip kind of finish so I like to put that down inside my bags when I you know when I put it in um, and then it doesn't slip around in my bag so if you're not using feet you can um, use something like this or you can add a bit of tape or a bit of glue something like that uh, right so let me cut this out to the measurements it's supposed to be we were supposed to cut this really when we did our, the rest of our um, supplies, but I skipped ahead because I got too excited. So I'll cut it to the right dimensions, and remember we've skipped ahead a couple of steps because we just needed to double check that the um, that the distance between those feet was right, and it wasn't quite right. 
So I'm using my ruler to mark out the dimensions of the bag base. And this is in the supplies list, those dimensions are. Oh, I'll need that pencil, won't I, for marking the feet. Right, so we are quite close to seeing what our finished bag looks like now. I'll just cut this out. I'm using paper scissors for cutting the bag base. It's quite stiff plastic. I don't want to risk my fabric scissors. And what I do sometimes do, if you've got a, um, you know, one of those promotional nail files that Janelle sometimes sends out from a line bag, sometimes I just file the corners of these to make sure that they're not sharp. I don't know if I've got a nail file in my drawer at the moment, so I won't do that. We'll just nip the corner off with my paper scissors though, just to soften it up slightly, so you can't feel it um, rubbing through your, um, your bag. Right, and seeing as we've skipped ahead, we'll do the markings for the feet now as well. So. Uh, we need to mark halfway, so the centre is six and a half inches. So I'll mark my centre and then we need to do one and a quarter inches from each side to give us the right dimensions. And for the feet to be in the right place. one and a quarter on this side and it does say to make the other holes five inches from the center so once I've drawn these on I'll um, give you a look on the other view you can see how I've marked it then doesn't need to be particularly neat because it's going to be inside your bag anyway just as long as it's fairly accurate so that you can get your feet through so swap views. So that's how I've marked my um, bag base. And we get a little bit noisy now. So I'll explain what I'm going to do and then I'll turn my microphone off so you don't have to hear it. I'm going to get my, this is my mother's old chopping board glitter. She gave it to us, not for me to use as a riveting board but um, as a chopping board and it was so heavy I realised it was a perfect thing for cutting holes and riveting and things. <laughs> Sorry mum. Hammer and I'm using a manual hole punch for this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my hole punch is directly up on that marking of where those six markings are. I'm going to give it a few whacks until I punch a hole and I'm going to punch all six holes. So I'm going to turn my microphone off for a minute um, while I do that. So you won't be able to hear me at all, but you'll still be able to see me. Right, so I've got all six holes now. Hopefully you can hear me again. And that's it with a hole punch for the minute. So I'll put that back down out of the way. I know it is a bit weird without the sound, sorry. <laughs> uh, so I use Styleville. And I use a universal, and um, you should adjust your needle size to um, the what you're sewing. 
Now, because my Janome HD9 uses high-speed needles, which have got reinforced shafts, um, I can only get them in certain sizes. So I use a size 100 for my exterior fabrics and my thick fabrics, and then I use a size 75 or 80 for the lining fabrics. Right, so we've done our base, so we can put that to one side now because that's ready and prepared. And we'll skip back to step 12. So with right sides together, matching the top edges and seams. Now, we'll need our lining panel for this as well. So this is our finished lining. And do you remember you left a turning gap in one of the side seams? So that's where mine is. Now, I'm going to make sure that I insert my bag into this side because this is the side that's got the turning gap. And if you insert it in to this side, which has got the turning gap, you'll have less turning through to do. I've just realised we haven't put our strap anchors on, have we? Because we did them so early. Right. Um, oh, we should have added the strap anchors before we sewed the curved corners and the bottom. Okay. So... Um, Right, so when we did the four panels together and pressed them open, then we insert the strap anchors. So we'll just rewind a minute and pretend that we haven't done that. We'll add the strap anchors in. And we've got our handles attached to them already. So we'll need the washers. And these are the washers. If you haven't used strap anchors, there are tutorials on the Emmeline website on how to insert these. Um, so I'm not going to go through that here. I'm using Emmeline branded hardware because I know the quality is there. And I think if I've spent this much on supplies and fabric and all of this time, I don't want to ruin it with hardware that might fall apart um, or sort of dull over time. Although, as we said before, this um, fabric, the exterior fabric and the linen fabric, has been gifted to us by Lewis and Irene for promotional purposes. And this one is fairy clocks. Right, so I just had to straighten up the prongs a bit there to get it through the um, slits that I'd pre-made. And once you've got it through, just add the washers onto the back. And the washers go vertically rather than horizontally. And again, I'm folding them in on themselves so that as you're using this bag, the weight of the handles is going through onto itself. Now, if I didn't have foam in this, I would add an extra scrap of stabiliser. Or even, if you're going to be carrying something heavy in this bag, you know, considering it's the perfect size for books and files and things, you probably would want to add a bit of extra stabiliser to the backs of these. This one's a sample, so... Um, I'm not going to need to carry anything too heavy in here. It's more for admiring. Looking pretty. Right, so I'll add my washers onto this one as well. <coughs> Just bend these over. I've got a um, got one of these crease folder thingies which helps. Like a bone folder thingy although it's not made up bone plastic oh no it's not this one's a hera marker sorry <coughs> sorry that one's a hera marker so you can use a hera marker where you can't you need to make a mark but you can't use a pen or chalk or something like that because it's going to be visible so by using a hera marker you score along it with this thin edge and it leaves a crease behind which you can use for placement of things. Great for quilting, apparently. Right, so I've got two strap anchors in, and that's where we get the look of how our bag is going to look, actually, in the end. I really like that. I think this looks really pretty. Right, so I'll put the other strap anchors in. Again, straighten the prongs. And pop it through the slits. the last day of the month today isn't it so our birthday big bag and ear bonanza ends tonight 
Um, I believe Lizzie has been reminding us about the discount codes that are expiring tonight. So don't forget to use those. It's 30% discount. Don't forget to use those on your purchases if you are buying things. The only thing that's excluded from that is our Kutch pattern, Kutch bag, which is our charity pattern. Everything else is included. So if you've been thinking about getting the book, this is your opportunity to get it at 30% discount, which is quite a hefty discount. Okay, so I'll add this last strap anchor and then we can get back into routine. Follow the steps as we should have been following them. Sorry, I might have just caught my microphone there. Apologise for any little crackles. I think maybe I need a Beyonce microphone. I'm slightly concerned if I have a Beyonce microphone, might I be tempted to start singing while I'm sewing? If you've ever heard my singing voice, you'll know that that's really not a great possibility. Okay. I have to put a reminder up maybe on the screen. No singing allowed. Definitely wouldn't get anybody watching my videos then. <laughs> there we go. I seem to have bent that one. Let me unfold it and unbend it. There we go. Right. Fold it properly now without bending it. Right, so all four strap anchors are in. Not really as difficult to make them look. I just like to make a meal out of things. Right, so now we're going to put our finished bag into this section where the turning gap is. And it's going to be a real tight squeeze. But if you do it this way, you've only got to turn the outer, the exterior of the bag, through once. If you do it the other way, you've got to turn it through once to get it right side out, and then once more to get the exterior on the outside. So this way, you've only got to turn it through once. And pull it into place, so manipulate it into place, and match up those seams at the top. Um, just give those a nice little clip and you can match up your centre marks as well just to make sure that everything matches nicely and here at the top I like to do my seam allowances um, in opposite directions so for my exterior the seam allowance is facing this way and for my lining my seam allowance is facing that way so I believe the proper term for that is nested but as I'm not a quilter I'm taking a stab in the dark there I'm sure you can tell us if you know if you know what I'm talking about <laughs> you can tell us right so those front and backs are lined up now on the side you'll take the marking from the center of the edge panel and match that to the side seam of the lining and you'll need these markings so don't skimp on them when you're um, doing your stabilizers and transferring markings because this our exterior panel is so much bigger or so much bulkier than the lining you really do have to manipulate it into place to make sure that you're matching up the top edge perfectly and it does match you just have to give it a bit of welly so you can see here I've matched it perfectly but in there it's really squished and a bit tight Right, so again, do the same on this side. And then I'll check for any comments or questions or messages before I sew this, just in case there's any questions about this part. And we're nearly done. And when we've sewn this and turned it through, then it's just a few extra steps and we'll be well on our way then. Right, so let's have a little look at questions and see. 
oh yes definitely put it in the side that the turning gap is there yeah I do as well I love this silver nickel it looks good yeah I agree with you nested brilliant okay well done to me hi Inga nice to see you right I'm just gonna have a little drink so I'll turn my microphone off for a sec Oh, Janet, I would love for you to come and stay with us. When we get the retreats back up and running, that would be great um, to come and stay with us. Um, yes, Valerie, as a beginner, this book will be great for you. In fact, actually, we kind of wrote it as an all-skill level book. And that was really important to me, that we didn't just aim it at beginners or experts or intermediates or anything. So in the front here have a look on youtube there's a full walkthrough of what's in the book but basically we start off with techniques so the first uh the first 78 pages out of 144 are devoted to techniques and this talks you through everything from hardware to how to resize a pattern basic slip pockets, zip pockets, um, zip gussets, how to split a line in and add a zip bridge in the top. That's where you look inside a bag and there's a zip closure. Um, it talks you through literally everything that I could think of at the time. Um, obviously, it was a couple of years ago now. Um, well, it was released last year, so um, there is slightly more I would add now if I was writing it now, but at the time, it included literally everything everything I could think of to add in this book so um, you know and there will be things that maybe you think okay I'm not quite ready to do that but when I do come across it I can come back to it or there are things that you think okay well this teaches me step by step now how to do this and then when you get a little bit further on your journey or you're making another pattern and you think actually I don't like the way that the zip pockets done in that I'm going to go back and do it this second way that's in the book. Um, or you could think, okay, well, this pattern is absolutely perfect for me from another designer, but it's not quite the right size. And that's when you can come to the resizing section and that will teach you how to resize any pattern. So all of these techniques, transferable skills across all patterns. And I thought it was really important that this book was a resource for everybody not just people who use my patterns so I've put in there everything you'll need to know that you can use for any pattern at all because I think there are a lot of very talented designers out there and it would be short-sighted of me to try and limit people to only sewing my patterns especially because I'm quite slow at designing and then the second half of the book is eight projects and these range in skill level but don't be daunted by that because there's things that are maybe advanced level that you could just leave out some of the things. So the Darling Day Sling, that's considered a, let me tell you what skill level that's considered, an intermediate. But if you left out the zip bridge in the top and maybe the zip pockets on the front, you would bring that right down to a beginner level. And you could easily do that. Or, I mean, I... I'm a very big believer that you can make any pattern you want as long as you have got enough help and support. So if you see something and you think, oh, that's slightly, um, slightly higher skill level than I'm at, give it a go. And when you get stuck, if you get stuck, you can always come back and ask us for some help. Um, so sorry, I went off on one there a little bit. <laughs> so we're on the city tote. Now, this one is considered intermediate again. Um, but hopefully using this sew along you can go back and um, watch it again if you get stuck um, right so let's have a look so um, Lizzie's popping in some different um, information about which sew alongs are coming in May and then we're going to have a little break in June um, from the sew along so get your sew alongs in during this month and next um, right lovely oh good I can't wait to see your finished bags. I get really excited when I think, oh, you're going to make a bag. I love it. 
And actually, I think seeing other people's bags really inspires me to keep going and keep creating. So thank you for sharing. Uh, right, now let's start. Um, where are we going to start? I'm going to start around about here, I think. And I'm going to sew around the entire top, just ensuring that I keep all of these layers flat under the needle. So it might be a bit puckered and a bit ruckled over here as we get to that. I'll just pull it straight um, and I know it fits perfectly because I've just measured it and it looks lovely and I'm going to sew all the way around without stopping now because my machine is a flatbed I'm going to sew inside the bag not I'm not going to get inside the bag and sew it <laughs> just imagine a tiny me inside anyway um so I'm gonna sew so I'm gonna turn my bag like this and I'm gonna put my presser foot there and I'm going to sew all the way around on the inside. So rather than putting my presser foot here and sewing around here, I'm going to sew there around the inside. So if you've got a flatbed machine, you can do the same. Don't be afraid of a flatbed machine. It's a little bit um, sort of more manoeuvring maybe, but um, now I'm really used to it um, and don't have any problems at all. All right, so I'll back stitch at the start and the end of this. Just slowing to a stop for whenever I need to reposition and just just pull the bag out of the way don't be afraid of it it's like driving a car slow and steady and then you can reposition as you need to don't panic and don't run anybody over goodness I'm not a driving instructor with instructions like that so after I finish this very exciting news we're going to launch the hope handbag tonight or rather at midnight tonight so I guess it'll be tomorrow but after this I'm just going to double check all of the listing is ready TT has got the paper patterns ready to post out to you if you buy those. PDF is ready to go. So if you were in the Bag of the Month Club, you'll already have the Hope handbag, but if you weren't, now's your opportunity to get it. So on these sides, there's a little sort of, um, once you get to the corner, then I just lift up and reposition. If you've got space for an extension table and you've got one for your machine, do pop it on because it holds the weight of this bag up um, and makes it a little bit easier to sew, I find. Background to the start. So, oh no, my bobbin ran out. Oh no. <laughs> Look, I've got a little gap there with no bobbin thread. Oh dear. I was so confident that my bobbin was going to be okay. <laughs> oh, right. I have to load a new bobbin. Let's just even I better better wind one hand I so that it matches so if anybody's made any of the bags this month because of the sew alongs we'd love to see them to tag us and let us see what you've made just get that winding 
see if there's any um, other comments. Oh, thanks, Monica. That's great. Um, so I don't love standing up to sew because I do have um, I do have hypermobile joints. So I find that when I stand up to sew, it puts a lot of stress on my hips. And then the next day, I struggle a little bit to walk. Um, and overnight, you know, if I need to get up in the night for anything, I need to use crutches. So I don't love standing up to sew. But I think it's better for you to see me um, demonstrating standing up to sew. So, um, oh, I've got my bobbin in back to front again. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't mind standing up to sew. I don't find it any different, really, to sitting down and sewing, except for balancing on one leg. <laughs> and that's, I think, what hurts my joints. But um, that's why you don't see me standing up to sew very often. Usually I have a stool and I sit, and um, this counter to my side is where my sewing machine lives usually. But actually, for the demonstrations, um, I think it works better for you to be able to see exactly what I'm doing. And that's why I try and limit the um, time that I'm on. So you'll never see me go over three hours because um, my hips just can't handle it. Have I done my bobbin now? Oh, I've put it in already. Put it in. There we go. Right. So close and yet so far. Right, any other comments? Great. A breakfast bar chair and a box for the pedal. Oh, I could, but knowing me, I'd probably crash into it um, or send something flying. I'm very clumsy. <laughs> Terribly clumsy. Right, so I'll start where I finished last time. Back stitch to close that. There we go. So that should all be lovely and yeah. So I'll just trim my extra threads. There we go. Always happens, doesn't it? And thank goodness you're here because I might have thought, oh, my bobbins run out. I might as well go and get a cup of tea or something and then never come back to it. Right. So now we need to open our turning gap. So do you remember that turning gap we left in the line in? Now I basted across it with my longest stitch length, which is the number six. Now I'm gonna steam press those stitches and then unpick it. And I left it stitched up or basted together so that it didn't, um, you know, so the layers didn't come apart while I was sewing. Because sometimes it can stretch out a little bit. So I left it all in place. I'm just gonna steam press those. I say steam press, I'm really just shooting a bit of steam at it. Okay, now I'm going to unpick those. And this is exactly the same as we did for the lining. So um, you can see on yesterday's live how I do this. So I'm going to find the opening, put the red ball of the ripper in and just whiz along. I meet some resistance yeah okay now this is a big bag to go through not a very big turning gap so um, leave that gap as big as you can okay here we go now I'm going to pull this through as gently and delicately as I can to avoid too many creases or any stitches pulling oh no hang on Hang on, back, 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 go back, rewind, rewind, don't actually rewind, I'll rewind, forgot to trim the seams, so on these corners, pretend that's still tucked in, there we go. see if I'd filmed this pre-recorded, I could have cut that bit out, couldn't I? 
let's change the angle so you can see. So what we're going to do now is cut a little triangle either side of these seams here into the seam allowance and that's going to reduce bulk when we turn it through. I'm trying to do this close enough to the camera so you can see but not so, no. I'll do it this way. Close enough so that you could see but not so close that um, I couldn't see. But I couldn't see. Just try my smaller scissors. And we're literally just taking away a bit of bulk from these seam allowances. That's all we're doing here. So I'll trim it and then I'll show you. Let's do it both sides of that seam. I don't really want to cut into the stitches on that side seam because it means that um, I'd be weakening that seam. Let me show you where I've got to with there. Okay, so I've just cut a couple of little notches into that seam allowance there to reduce the bulk. And I'm going to do it on the other side as well. And I look at the photo for this in the book and I laugh because to take that photo, I had to kneel on the floor with my arms up here and the bag in front of me like this. So it was like this, my head down, my arms up. This is not the screenshot we want to use, Lizzie. And then the photographer was behind me. So I had to look completely natural with my arms out of shot, my head down here, my arms up there on the counter. And then the photographer had to come right behind me over my head and take a photo of that. So that is basically, when you look at it in the book, this is basically what you're seeing. <laughs> like that. And then um, my husband did take a photo of that exact process on the because he thought it was hilarious. But all of the photos where my hands are in it, basically you have to have really natural looking wrists and hands while your arms are up here and you're kneeling on the ground. And in the end, I went and got my, um, I've got like a gardener's kneeling pad, um, you know, kneeling in the garden in the end I went and got that out of storage and knelt on that on the ground because I've um, had wooden floor MDF wooden floor even in the um, in the studio where we were in Wales but yes the glamorous life of an author <laughs> so I'm just taking a little bit of bulk out of the seam allowances at the top as well either side of the um, seams and I'll show you this once I've cut into it as well and this will just help it sit neater once you've turned it through so I'll change the angle so you can see just on the top there just take out as much as you can without clipping into the seams or without sort of losing any structural integrity of those seams without going too far and without clipping through your stitching obviously feel like I've given away all the trade secrets now, how to uh, take photos in the book. And my, um, the salon I went to at that time where I lived there, they um, managed to find a completely neutral um, nail polish that matched my skin tone perfectly, um, which I had. So I had to time my visits to the salon for when the photographer was coming. And um, he was a great guy to work with. He was very, very professional. He taught me quite a few tricks. I just thought that would be funny when you see that photo now in the book. You would know the secret behind it. <laughs> right, so just trim these. And then we can turn it through. Just want to reduce as much bulk out of the seam allowance. If you're not using faux leather, if you're using cotton, then this won't be so bad. But if you're using faux leather, you just want to make sure that those top edges have got as little bulk in them as possible. And not just for the, you know, for you to help your machine sew through them, but just so it looks nice and neat along that top edge. Let's see if there's any comments, if everybody's okay. 
Um, right, let's see. Yep, no, it's hard um, to sew standing up. Uh, do I put tape over the metal anchor bars? Usually, yes, I do. Usually I put duct tape over them, um, but I haven't got any at the moment. Hi, Ivana. Oh, you got your pair of scissors. Great. I love them. Karen K. Buckley, they are. They are um, micro serrated. Very nice. Right, we need to find our turning gap again. Right, so pretend this is us turning it through for the first time. We haven't done any rewinds. So now I'm going to turn it through as gently and carefully as I can without ripping any stitches or uh, damaging anything. Gently, gently, slow and steady. Nice, gentle little tugs. They're always best, I think. There we go. So there's the bulk of our bag out. So we've only had to turn the exterior of our bag through once. And now we can turn our lining out. Just check for any stray threads. And I've got my bag base sitting right here so I don't forget to insert that. I've got a nice big stray thread there. Pull that out. And just make sure that these top corners are pushed out as best as you can. And you can get your crochet hook in there if you want and push those out. In fact, I might do that. Seeing as we're here, yeah. I'll just push those out, get all my layers into place, and put a little clip on it. Now you will probably want to press the top edge of your bag all the way around the top before you top stitch. As I said, my faux leather really doesn't appreciate being pressed so I am going to take the very courageous step of not pressing the top of my bag before I top stitch which I do actually quite often do or not do quite often I do just clip leave it to sit for a, a while and then top stitch it without pressing Okay, now I'm going to make sure that that centre and the side seam is rolled out fully. First, tuck my lining down inside. And I will close my turning gap, but we need to remember to put our base in first. Push everything out reach in through the turning gap and make sure that all those corners and edges and everything is pushed through really really nicely and just finger roll that lining to the inside and clip it down in place hope everybody's got some nice plans for this weekend sewing maybe be a nice weekend for a retreat wouldn't it oh well Right, and we'll just do this side as well. You can always tug the lining down from inside to help encourage it down into the bag. That one is not very well pulled down. There we go. I like to just hold it up and double check that I can't see any of the lining that it's definitely sort of pulled down and hidden inside. tug down one inside right oh dear sorry I hope that wasn't crackling too much I think I was pulling on my microphone there really do need to get Beyonce one and put a sign up no singing 
Right, so that is ready for top stitching. And I'm going to top stitch this one before I put the um, base in. Because once you've got the base in, it does come quite firm on the bottom there. So um, just, ignore, just ignore my instructions at this point. And we'll top stitch first. Just check if there's any questions or queries. Um... <laughs> oh, Varna Elaine, yes, well, I um, I turned my Ankara wax one through earlier and it took me about 10 minutes, so um, I deliberately had to take a deep breath before, before I turned this one through, just in case. <laughs> oh dear. Your smallest, oh gosh, your smallest scissors went missing. That's a problem with children isn't it say children your child's an adult but and she should know better than pinching your scissors right okay so we're going to top stitch now um usually you would top stitch on this side over your free arm but as we no, I don't have a free arm, so I'm going to um, turn this inside out to top stitch it, and that's why I haven't put the base in yet, because it's absolutely impossible to do this once the base is in and keep it in a nice, neat way. So I'm turning this inside out just so that I can sew inside the bag, but still be sewing on the exterior fabric, if that makes sense. So get that as neat and straight as you can. Tuck everything inside. Now I like to start on the back of the bag. So I'm considering this the back of the bag with the pockets in. And I'm going to start sewing from here all the way around. So I'll pop this in the machine and then I'll change the view for you so you can see what's going on. There we go, so that's in the machine under the foot. And I'm not going to back stitch on this one at the start and the end, I'm going to pull my threads through. Because I haven't pressed this, I am just encouraging the lining down into place with my thumb underneath. We'll give it a slightly softer top edge. can't see my concentration face on this angle but trust me it's there this faux leather shows every single wobbly stitch so just being a bit careful and when I was sewing the um, Ankara one with the cork and it got really quite thick, I was talking to my machine quite a lot, telling her lots of lovely things. So I'm just manipulating my lining back into place.
Right, I'm pausing there for a second before I go back onto my faux leather because this faux leather is very soft and I'm just going to make sure I'm in exactly the right place I need to be. And just, you know, just pull your bag however you need to. As long as this bit under the foot doesn't move, you're okay. I'm just pulling my lining down again the underside. Right. Slow and steady wins the race. Nice and easy. start now instead of um, clipping my threads I'm going to pull those out long and then I can pull them through to the back so use the bobbin thread to pull these through to the back or if you've got a needle handy you can use that to pull them through Tie these off in the back there. I've got a loose thread there. Trim that one off. And you can tie these off at the back to secure them. And nobody will notice that little knot there. And you can add a little dab of fray check to stop it coming undone. It means that you don't have the unsightly back stitching at the start and the end. Right, so let's check for any stray threads and we'll turn it right sides out again. Now, don't forget, we need to put our feet and face in and then we're done. Oh, we'll close our turning gap. And how many of us have left our turning gaps open long term and then lost things in the turning gap while we're using the bag? Yep, that'd be me. So just finger roll those curves out. That's looking pretty good to me. Quite like it. Right, where's my turning gap? There it is. So now I'm going to push this through the turning gap. And remember, I've got a non-slip side on mine. So I'm going to put the non-slip side down so that um, if you feel it through under the lining, you can only feel the soft side. And then the gridded non-slip side, you can only feel underneath and it should hold it in place. Uh, right, feet. Uh, oh, thank you very much, Becky. I'm growing, oh, thank you very much, Barna Elaine. I'm growing my hair because, um, well, as you know, I loved my pixie crop and I still do love it. But um, I went through the awkward growing outy bit during the pandemic and my husband, some of you know this, he loves to do fancy braids and plaits and hairstyles on Elvis. And she doesn't sit still long enough for him to practice new styles on. So we got him um, for Christmas a couple of years ago a um, hairdresser's dummy head thing, who we call Bonnie. And um, he practices on her sometimes, but apparently it's not as not the same as practicing on real hair so I thought seeing as I'm through the awkward stage why don't I see how long he can grow it for and see if I can grow it long enough for him to practice and so far I'm up to this length and I had it cut the other day well trimmed really I had a had an undercut put in I don't know if you can see that and I was very tempted to say to her cut it all off again <laughs> Because I love my pixie crop and it's so easy to look after. But no, keep going a bit longer. We'll see. 
one day I might appear with fancy French braids and infinity braids and all sorts, and you'll know it was long enough then. Right, so this is a bit tricky to do. I've got one hand in my turning gap inside my bag, feeling for the hole in the bag base, and one hand on the outside pushing the feet in. Actually, the other view has got a really good view of this. So I'm using one hand to push it through and the other hand is inside my bag here through the turning gap, helping to um, manipulate that the prongs of the foot into the hole on the bag base. And once you've done that, you can just open up the prongs inside. And if you want to, you can reach through and add some um, duct tape. Oh, other tapes are available. I don't know what they call duct tape if it's not duct tape. I don't know. Electrical tape? I think that's something else altogether, isn't it? Um, lost my hole here. Oh, there we go. So I'll just open that out again. Oh no, oh no, oh no, I nearly lost my foot. Phew, rescued it. Last foot and last hole on the bag base. This also took me about 20 minutes earlier, so I'm glad it seems to be a bit easier this time. Uh, and open the prongs out inside. I can't really show you that because it's inside my lining, but um, you can see they're all secured there. And they're pushed through the fabric and the foam. And we, you know, we. Um, cut the holes for that earlier when we were cutting our fabric out. So then my bag base is inside there. I wonder if I turn it, you might be able to see enough of the, no, no, that's not working, is it? So let's turn you back. And the last thing we need to do is close our turning gap. So I'll pull this lining out and our seam allowances should fold naturally in together still because we uh, based it across the turning gap and we pressed them didn't we before we ripped them out so if you've got any questions on this bag ask them now and then by the time I finish this I'll be able to um, read them there is a slight delay so if you ask them now then that will give me um, a little while to catch up and then I can go and have a little look at the questions and see if we've got any more questions to answer I appreciate you being with us this month and, um, well, for the last 10 years, really, and for the next 10 years, however long. Um, I really appreciate that. And I really appreciate all of our guests who we've had and we've had so much encouragement um, and we've met so many wonderful people um, through doing this. So I just want to say thank you to you all. So I've clipped that turning gap. Now, if you... Um, a really good at hand stitch and you can close that with a ladder stitch I'm going to use my machine I'm just going to whiz along using a really close top stitch so not even an eighth of an inch and I'll pop all the way along To the end of the seam. Cut my, cut my uh, thread. Just trim these loose thread ends off, and then we are done. So we can have a look and see if there's any extra comments. Now you would usually give your bag a final press at this point. So I'm going to give it a little steam on the cotton panels. But these faux leather panels don't look too bad for all of their um, manipulating. And I know from experience, I've used this faux leather before, that if I leave it sitting for a few days, it will just um, nice and naturally 
I don't know, decrease. That's probably not the right word. Um, right, now I've forgotten to get my oven glove, but usually what I would do at this point is get my oven glove on my hand and put my hand inside and give it a nice good steam press. But I don't have that, so I should probably not do that. So I'll just keep my hand out. Just give it a couple of shots of steam. Helps to have your hands in there because there's something to press against then. Oh, go on, let's do it anyway. If you feel any kind of heat at all, pull your hand out straight away. Don't do it. Um, don't do this at home, obviously. Safety never takes a day off, even when you've forgotten to bring your oven glove into the sewing studio. Actually, with this bag, I've got my hand the other side of the zips divider, so um, I've got my hand in there. So the layers of fabric between me and the iron are immense. Right, so there we go. That's our bag finished. So you can see it's got a nice, wide, boxy shape. And you might think from looking at the fabrics that it would create more of a um, sort of narrower, triangular that's a real word, by the way, triangular shape, but it doesn't. It creates a nice boxy shape, and that's the interior. Uh, let me turn that round because I've got my exterior fabric as a contrast slip pocket and as the zip divider there. And the zip divider is what pulls it in and gives it that boxy shape rather than the um, triangular shape. And you can add the snap as we have and actually if you want to add two snaps you could add two snaps so they're there instead personally I don't tend to leave this one snapped up but um, and I, that's why I was going to leave the snap out because I don't tend to use the magnetic snap but not maybe for a sample I should probably have it in there so that's our finished bag let's see if there's any questions or queries from you well thank you for joining us we really appreciate it um, let's have a look. Oh, gaffer tape. There we go. Oh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I love this fabric combination as well. It's a little bit prettier than I usually use. I don't normally use such pretty fabrics. I tend to use more ge geometrics and florals, but um, that's, I do like it. Right, Alison, if you've got any other qu questions, come back to us. That's okay. Not a problem. You can either ask here on the feed or in the group post it as a separate query you can post pictures of your um you know where you've stumbled or you can email us or contact the page any any of that you'll get a quicker answer in the group because there's also our team of testers who are in the group and they keep an eye out for questions as well but don't worry if you've got any other questions after today no problem yes valerie if you order on our website then you get the signed copy signed by me um, if you order it from Amazon, then you don't get signed copy, but you can use your Prime subscription if you've got Prime. And you might want to, um, if you're not in the UK, you might want to shop around and see where you can get it cheapest. So it depends if you prefer to have a signed copy or a, um, you know, save a little bit of money. Either way, whichever works out best, no problem. There is 30% discount on it at the moment. Use the code uh, BONANZA2021, all in capitals, BONANZA2021, and that will give you 30% discount until midnight GMT tonight, or BST, because apparently we're in summertime. So um, if you want to buy it, buy it fairly sharpish, and then you get the discount. Oh, thank you, Deb, for joining us. That was really kind of you to say. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks, Cindy. Thanks, Alison. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, Belle. Thanks, Deb. Thank you, Valerie. I hope you make one. Thanks, Sharon. Um, so, Dalbert, if I was going to place the snaps, I would sew my lining main panels to my lining side panels, and then I would put them an inch from the top, so the top of the snap an inch from the top of the lining, and then I would put them as close to these side seams here as you can and then that would just give it that kind of look rather than that kind of look so at the moment that's how it meets at the moment snap out that's how it meets at the moment but if you were to add the two snaps it would meet like that so you've got that option um thank you for being here 
Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Jana. Thank you, Penny. Oh, yes, a lot, I think. <laughs> I think you can put a lot in here. Um, thank you so much for joining us and um, really appreciate it. Thank you for all your support over the last 10 years. Um, let's get my other bag up as well. I should have got one of the samples out from storage. I didn't think about it, but I've, luckily I've got two here. We really appreciate you joining us and um, especially me for supporting me over the last 10 years. Thank you very much. And I really can't wait to see what you make. So do share with us in the group or on Facebook or Instagram or on YouTube. If you make, um, make one of our patterns, please do come and show us. But thank you for tonight and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.